<clears throat> what up, y'all? It's your boy, Pat Gray, K.A. Perez, out for the Rumble Room. Um, just here to provide a little um, update on what's coming um, through with uh, this news. <clears throat> There's some very important news that uh, I feel everybody should really uh, be aware of. <clears throat> now, of course, if you're a Hebrew, you understand why these things are happening, right? You understand why these things are happening, All right? The Daniel's image is, is trembling, okay? The last captivity is about to fall. We know this, okay? Um, for those who aren't Hebrew, <clears throat> uh, for those who do not subscribe to the Hebrew prophecy, um, you still may find this. Well, this is really primarily for you. This is really like there's different levels to understanding how these events are playing out. If you're Hebrew, you know that this is supposed to happen. So I don't want my Hebrews to get it misconstrued that um, I'm trying to uh, that I'm in favor of keeping this establishment up. Y'all know how y'all know how I get down. <clears throat> right. But. So that we remain mindful of how these events are playing out um, so that we can understand the signs, the signs of this captivity falling. But also, if you're not Hebrew, this is just for your general awareness to to to, uh, you know, to to make you mindful of how um, prophecy is being fulfilled now. <clears throat> How do I connect those things? Prophecy being fulfilled and what's happening in America. So the DOJ, there's just been an article released uh, from in, from Yahoo. DOJ wants to suspend constitutional rights during coronavirus emergency. OK, how does this play out for Hebrews? Well, this is a sign that this is a sign that the, the government is in decline. Is, more and more, we're seeing that. More and more, we're seeing that this um, this uh, this this is not a this is not a democracy anymore. <clears throat> and for those who aren't of the Israelite faith, you can sort of pay attention to the signs as well. This is you're not living in America. This is this is not the original America that they that they you know drafted the you know this is not what they had in mind. And so this to 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 inform even those who are are Gentile who are not Hebrew, your America is changing. A fascist a fascist America is rising. Okay? A fascist America is rising. All right. If you want to really kind of uh broaden your studies, uh your understanding about how America is in decline. You can look at other world governments. You can you can do the Google on the internet, and you can uh, look up commentary on how your on how governments, republics, um, empires look when they're in decline. Okay, so let's get right into it. <clears throat> the DOJ wants to suspend constitutional rights during corona the coronavirus emergency. Okay. Um, I'm just going to skim through the article so that you guys are sort of aware. I actually, uh, I'll turn the camera around so you guys can uh, see it as well. Do, 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 do. All right, here we go. Let's, um, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but I'll read it. The Trump Department of Justice has asked Congress to craft legislation allowing chief judges to indefinitely hold people without trial and suspend other constitutionally protected rights during coronavirus and other emergencies, according to a report by political politicals, Betsy Woodruff Swan. OK, uh, you can also find that that article on my wall. Uh, the, the original political articles on my wall above this one. <clears throat> The, G the DOJ has requested Congress allow any chief judge or district court to pause court proceedings whenever the district court is fully or partially closed by virtue of any natural disaster, civil disobedience, or any emer or other emergency situation, according to the draft language obtained by political. 
This would be applicable to any statutes or rules of procedure otherwise affecting pre-arrest, post-arrest, pre-trial, trial, and post-trial procedures in criminal and juvenile proceedings and all civil processes and proceedings. They justify this by saying currently judges can pause judicial proceedings in an emergency, but that new legisl but that new legislation would allow them to apply it in a consistent manner. Okay. Absolutely, Diamond Dirt. Absolutely. <laughs> so what what's going on is what's going on is they are encroaching. They are encroaching upon American citizens' constitutional right to um, um to a due process. Right? They can expediently make judgments and do whatever it is they wish with you if they find you to be in violation of the law, which is. This is it's pretty easy with the, uh, so many laws that we have. Um, <clears throat> so, but the but the Constitution grants citizens habeas corpus, which and this is gonna understate what I said, which gives arrestees the right to appear in front of a judge. This is due process is describing, and ask to be released before trial. Enacting legislation like the DOJ wants would essentially suspend habeas corpus indefinitely until the emergency ended. The emergency, which is what we're, what we're facing, is is the coronavirus threat, right? Further, DOJ asked Congress to suspend the statute of limitations on criminal investigations and civil proceedings during the emergency until a year after it ended. So they can, they can, uh, um, so statute of limitations um, in ensures that at some point this a criminal investigation would end. They could only hold an investigation on you for so long. Well, this is saying. It's going to extend, suspend the statute of limitations. All right. So they, they, this, what they're calling for is more totalitarian control. They are asking that all the legal checks that 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 um, sort of impede them from holding a citizen, from detaining a citizen, be suspended. And. And as you can say, as you can see here, Norman Norman Reiner, executive director of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, told Political that the measure was terrifying, saying not only would it be a violation of habeas corpus, but it says affecting pre-arrest. So that means you could be arrested and never be brought before a judge until they decide that the emergency that the emergency or or the civil disobedience is over. I find it absolutely terrifying, especially in a time of emergency. We should be very careful about granting new powers to the government. This, that is something that should not happen in a democracy. Okay. This is this is a a, a criminal defense uh, executive director of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. He knows the law. He's seeing how the legal chess pieces are being moved. To alter the nature of our government, <clears throat> which is quickly morphing, quickly, quickly morphing from a democracy to a totalitarian dictatorship. Right, right. Red letter. They could, they could, they could, uh, they could, they can. Right. They have more control over the criminal process, and you can imagine that expedient. You know, you know, expedient um, criminal um, judgments is definitely not out of the question. It's definitely something that they're given control over. They can they can judge however they want without a jury, or they can just detain you. They can just throw you in a cell and and, and lock you up and without ever having to provide um, a, a reason. So. Habeas corpus. That's what's at stake here. Um, we'll kind of go through some. We'll quickly kind of go through it. <clears throat> okay, this is from this is at the law, law Cornell um, Cornell Law School website. Uh, this is habeas corpus. This is from Article One. Uh, what is it like? Let me. I got it up here somewhere. 
Article 1, Section 9, Clause 2 of the Constitution, suspension of habeas corpus. The privileges of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it. So think about the legal precedent. Think about what these these minds, right? These These minds who are conspiring to do this thing, right? to encroach upon your constitutional uh, right to habeas corpus, okay? Think about what they might be thinking. How, how can we get away with it? How can, what, what legal footing do we have to stand on in order to make this fly, all right? It says, in, un, unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it. So, Public safety is really sort of the what they're trying to sort of um, use to to be able to to suspend this uh, this this law. We're dealing with coronavirus. Okay, think of all the all the rhetoric and all the jargon they've been sort of priming us and preloading us with. It's a war. It's a war. It's an invisible enemy. You know they've in, they've enacted martial law. You would have thought there. You would have thought that we would have had some sort of imminent, like physical, like foreign threat, like another nation invading the country. They're getting all the pieces in place based on coronavirus. <laughs> all the wartime law based on coronavirus. Now, unless coronavirus is some foreign nation. Like I get public safety, I get I get public safety, I get, you know. But there's some things that just should not should not be happening. Not based on this, not not based on the the premise of of coronavirus. This is this is dangerous. But the bet is the bet is that the government will keep us safe. So so we trust it to do to do just that, right? While while you know, corporations have taken over the government while we've seen encroachments upon um, our Fourth Amendment, the right to, you know, to be secure in our own homes, on our private properties. We've seen that encroached upon. We've seen an encroachment on our right to gather in public spaces. Okay? Just, you know... Just saying this to really sort of start thinking ahead, you know. We're we're, we're happy. We, I would say that generally we've been a sort of, uh, uh, if not happy, just a complacent. You know, if you if you if we're going to arrive at this point of complacency where we allow our government, you know, and this has been going on for years, to sort to encroach upon the Constitution. You know, it's it's a matter of it's a matter of fact that it's happening. You know. You know, we we we're reactionary. We we we're on our laurels. We're on our laurels, right? And so we're 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 having this reactionary position, and we're waiting for things to happen. And it's like, meanwhile, they're playing chess. They're putting all the pieces in place. All and it's like, it's like I I, I said it in a, in a, in a, in, a, in the last um. In the last live, it's like almost like a, a Chinese finger trap. Like you, you, you put your fingers in it, and, it, and the trap grabs you. You can't pull it. You know, the deeper you go into the the Chinese finger trap, and this is no pun intended. This has nothing to do with 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 corona. You know, with what they the rate. You know, what they're implying about coronavirus. This is I'm just this is an idea. All right, it's an idea we're dealing with. You you go further in, you can't you can't get out. So now what I'm what I'm what I'm just saying what I'm doing this for is to allow uh, you you Americans us Americans to really think about what's happening here and to really and at, at the very least at the very least understand that there is a, a there is something happening things are changing the temperature is changing the weather is changing with our with our government with our in our legal landscape right um <clears throat> So to provide a little history on habeas corpus, habeas corpus means Latin 
Latin for that you have the body. And the U.S. system federal courts can use the writ of habeas corpus to determine if a state's detention of a prisoner is valid. A writ of habeas corpus is used to bring a prisoner or other, de or other detainee, for example, institutionalized mental patient, before the court to determine if the person's imprisonment or detention is lawful. This is what they're, this is what they're asking to, to suspend. They, they, they're asking, they're essentially asking for, um, for non-accountability, right? When you have this law working in your favor, you can say, hey, you owe me an explanation why that person's in jail, all right? And what happens to one citizen can happen to all citizens, right? So this is, this is cause for concern. All right. A habeas peti petition proceeds as, as a civil action against the state. It proceeds as a civil action against the state who holds the defendant in custody. It can also be used to examine any extradition process used, the amount of bail, jurisdiction, so on and so forth. All right. <clears throat> this provides the history of the of the of the law. You guys can go through this. It goes back to England. And uh, the people wanting the king to explain why he was holding people in jail, constables and other nobles, what, so on and so forth. <clears throat> um, and so, and then, and then it has uh, an update upon about uh, regarding how it's how it's used in, today in the states. Um, I'll let you guys go through that if you want. This is you know just just. Look up habeas corpus Cornell law. The site will come up. Now, there's a bigger conversation um, that should be had here. <clears throat> a, a much bigger conversation. Um, we, so if we're thinking about, if we're considering that the DOJ wants to suspend, it's making motion to suspend constitutional laws. And this is, this is, this is some pretty direct, this is a pretty direct maneuver. Like they're not, they're not taking any angles on this. They're not even being shy about it. They're, they're very much north and south, north to south, you know, running right here. This is just very direct. Okay, and 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 they released the article, and so it's obvious that they that that they're trying to inform us on what's happening. Okay. Now understand that if the government is so bold to ask the the you know the DOJ to suspend habeas corpus law, what 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 prevents them from you know asking <clears throat> the suspension of other laws? You know if we're if we're if they succeed in convincing everybody that this is like a wartime situation. <clears throat> and the government, the president is granted total, you know, total powers, emergency powers. Like, you know, what, what, what prevents other en encroachments of other amendments? Um, because I know that Americans generally are, you know, we learn the stuff in high school and it's really quick and we sort of forget about it. And we're, you know, many of us, you know, some of us go to college and we take a history course, we learn it, but we forget it. Um, and so it's, I think it's important to, for, for Americans to really consider um, the, the, imp the very fundamental, important amendments that are at stake. If we're talking about <clears throat> the suspension of constitutional rights, you know, we seen, we've seen how the government has slowly, like just in a, just in a week, just in two weeks, America is different. America is very different. We are we are confined to our houses right now. And and it's going to become the norm to where police are going to be asking you why are you out? And it's like, "Whoa, snaps." Like, wow, just last week I was just kind of going to the park when I wanted and now the cops I'm sitting at the park and the cops are telling me the park is closed and I got to go and and I can't even put up a fight. I can't even put up a fight because this is like the new norm now. This is they got the you know the momentum's rolling, and the cops the cops know everybody knows that you're supposed to be quarantined, and if you put up a fight, they can just lock you up. And with this habeas corpus, 
they can just keep you in there. If they don't, if they don't already use the system and say, "Oh, your sis, your you know, we're on quarantine. Everybody's detained. Um, you know, everybody's quarantined. It's going to be hard to move your paperwork." You know, like that's what they've really been doing. They, they'll keep people locked up. They'll keep people. Oh, we got to process your, you know, paper. Us oh, backed up. There's a backlog and you know paperwork. Now everybody's quarantined. You know, it's, it's it's even scarier. Man, like wow! Please do not get arrested at this time, folks. Please do not. Because it'll be like Inquisition times. You'll be locked up in the dungeon. <laughs> never to be heard from again like you might be swallowed by this beast um so just to just for everyone to kind of get a quick refresher i'm going to go through the first um four amendments i'll just quickly go through them we're talking about a government who is asking to suspend constitutional rights we need to think about you know what rights may be next because you know, if they if they really succeed in, in getting this in you know this this written this put in in writ, like this is a, a an abs this is the, would be the biggest concession that American citizens would have made in the history of of the country. <clears throat> First Amendment First Amendment guarantees freedoms concerning religion, expression, assembly. And the right to petition, it forbids con it forbids Congress from promoting from both promoting one religion over others, and also restricting an individual's religious practices. It guarantees freedom of expression by prohibiting Congress from restricting the press or the rights of individuals to speak freely. It also guarantees the right of citizens to assemble peaceably and to petition their government. And Obama Obama signed um um signed a law I can't, I can't remember what it was called but it basically restricted um it restrict it restricted public assembly in um assembly in public spaces. And it was it was a law in the name of safety. You guys can probably google it. I'm not a law I'm not a lawyer, but that's enough information that to have a lead on that. You can research that. <clears throat> um Second Amendment. The Second Amendment of the United States Constitution reads a well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Okay, this is this is the right for you to own a gun. Okay. That's a no that's a that's a no can do in in California. California loves the federal government, you know, it's a, a love affair. Um and so they've succeeded in like, you know, putting like strict restrictions on that. You can't just buy a gun. Um such language has created considerable debate regarding the amendments intended scope. On the one hand, some believe that the amendments phrase the right to for the people to bear, keep and bear arms creates an individual's constitutional rights for citizens of the United States. Okay, so um, this law was given, the history of this law was given in the time of the, you know, it was given to prevent, um, um, to, in, I'm sorry, empower American citizens, citizens to defend themselves against the tyrannical government. All right. So if we're thinking about like the colonies, um, you know, how, how the colonists felt towards the British imperial government. They felt that Britain was was becoming tyrannous. And so they wrote this into their law. This is your right to bear arms and and, and start setting it off, if, you know, if you fail, you know, and, and the government can't get in your way. On um, the Third Amendment, um, this this amendment, um, okay, I'll just read it. Described by some as a preference for the civilian over the military, the Third Amendment forbids the forcible housing of military personnel in a citizen's home during peacetime and requires the process to be prescribed by law in times of war. 
All right, so this this provides limitations on uh, the the government to use your house to lodge soldiers, because that's what was happening back then. Uh, I think the British government was taking over people's houses and lodging soldiers. Um, Fourth Amendment. Okay, this is the right to, to be secure in your own home. The Fourth Amendment originally enforced the notion that each man's home is his castle, secure from unreasonable searches and seizures of property by the government. Can anyone think of somebody who, who's uh, um, suffered uh, from unreasonable searches and seizures? <laughs> Any government officials entering your home and confiscating your technology? I know somebody that that happened to. <clears throat> All right. Like this prevents that this prevents that Nazi Gestapo come in and, you know, don't have to ask any questions. You know, this protects you from that. Now, that's the last amendment I'm going to go through for now. But when we start to think about the big picture. Right. When we start to think about the government making motions to, um, wow, that happened, huh? That happened, huh, bro, Diamond? Wow. Um, when we start thinking about how the government um, is making motion to suspend co certain constitutional rights, you know, they, they, you know, what, what would stop them? What would stop them? So just for just so that you know, if you're Hebrew, if you're Hebrew, you understand why this is why this is happening. You understand that America is in decline. America is very vulnerable. If they if they were secure, if they figured that things were okay, that they had a lid on things, they wouldn't be making motions to change laws. All right? They wouldn't be making motions to change laws. They're sensitive. The government is very sensitive right now. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how the government is sensitive. Is you know China is China is giving us the middle finger. Our main manufacturer of retail goods, all the things that like stop you know fill our shelves coming from China. All our medicine, all our medical supplies, they come from China, and our docks are empty. China is giving us the middle finger. Our latest shipment of medical, I think, masks came from Taiwan. It didn't come from China. It came from Taiwan. And China's mad at, Ta China's mad at Taiwan. And, Ch and Taiwan is in no position to stand up to, to China without us. So if America's weak and can't defend Taiwan, Taiwan's very likely to bail, like in the future. They're, they're operating in the good faith that, that America's going to, going to be okay and going to recover. But America relies on China. They, you know, some of the best chess players can see a checkmate coming, like moves, like many, 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 many moves ahead before it's over with. They can, they can calculate the moves. So if we're thinking forward, right, if we're thinking forward and we're, we're thinking about how this is going to play out, like, uh, t commentators on the, uh, uh, you know, political commentators are talking about how Taiwan is 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 in danger, and and China will likely will likely invade Taiwan at some point. All right, um, but if we're thinking about the U.S., you know, our our supplies, our docks are empty. Okay. And and you may not feel it now because we we have sort of this we still have stuff on the shelves, we still have stuff in distribution centers. But those distribution centers have to be have to be refilled. They have to be replenished. So the what we're looking at is a dry well in the middle of summer. Late spring, middle of summer, if if supplies haven't been coming in by then, we're you know, Americans are going to be f foraging for their own food. It's not looking good. America's America's weakened right now. So so China's giving us the middle finger. Our education, you know, it, it, our education is imploding. Our education 
relies on on federal funds. What are what are where do we get federal funds from? Taxes. Taxes. Where do ta where do taxes come from? The citizens. But the citizens are quarantined because coronavirus. So citizens aren't paying taxes. Do you know that they've, that they've suspended the tax filing deadline to July 19th? I'd never heard of that in my life. That's called a concession. That's called a concession. That means like, you know... Please file taxes, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I know you guys haven't made it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've, you've been quarantined. Yeah, yeah. You haven't worked. You know, you haven't worked. We'll, we'll get. We'll give you to July nineteenth instead. How about that? So Americans aren't paying taxes. So federal funds are are going to be limited. Of course, they have economists that can sort of see down the road, be like, oh, this is, this is how much taxes Americans are paying. You know, so all our, all our public services, law enforcement, law, lots, lots of law enforcement, they got to worry about quarantining too. They got to, you know, emergency response. It were, it, it's imploding. It's it's shaking at the foundations. All the Hebrews have been saying this. We've been saying this before before the signs are being shown. But now it's here. It's here. The market has crashed. When in when in our lifetimes have we seen um trading halt at, at Wall Street? Didn't they just shut down Wall Street? Or aren't aren't traders working from home now? Traders are working from home now. Well, there is no wash. There's no, they're not, it's not, it's not popping like it will be the people with the headsets on, with the clipboards, you know. America is weak. Daniel's image is falling. Daniel's image is trembling. The kingdom of iron and clay. Okay, good. All, all the Gentiles, all you Christians, the Hebrews know. All you Christians, go get understanding. <laughs> Israel was always supposed to be the head and not the tail. Right? The people who America is lynched, the people who America is downpressed by their policies have arrested and shot. The people that Europe the col the colonial powers put in slave ships and dispersed to the four corners of the, of the earth we are the people we're not supposed to be who who you think we are the creator of this he of heaven and earth has allowed you to rise and uh, and because he's punishing us but if you read your bibles christians read your bibles there's four captivities, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Greece, and Rome. When your Jesus Christ came, he was supposed to liberate the people from Roman captivity. Because all the Israelites knew about the four captivities of Daniel 2 and the four beasts of Daniel 7. The Messiah is supposed to undo the fourth, the fourth power, the fourth captivity. <laughs> you read Second Ezra. This is tribulation on you Gentiles. This is coronavirus, America falling, Europe falling, UK falling, Italy falling, China falling, Russia falling. Put it together. The fourth beast, the fourth, the fourth captivity was supposed to rule over all, all peoples of the earth and involve and mingle itself amongst all peoples. 
You're living prophecy right now. You are witnessing the decline of the last kingdom. And if you do your research, the creator of heaven and earth is supposed to restore his people. And the peoples of the earth will pay back what they owe to the people of Israel. Those people who you call Negroes. Those people who you call who you call niggers. Who you told to go back to Africa. Who you put on your seven o'clock news and you accused us. You sought to accuse the accuse us. You threw us in poor living conditions and wouldn't give us jobs to pay our, to put roofs over our heads, wouldn't allow us to put food on our tables, and you left us no recourse but to commit crime. And you helped us to commit crime. You put guns in our hands and made us compete against our brothers to, to, to earn money illegally. And then you locked us up for it. You're going to pay. And this is your payback. This is your recompense. Go get the knowledge. Daniel 2, Daniel 7. Go get the knowledge. 2 Ezra 15, 16. Go get the knowledge. Go get it. Because you'll really understand why, why your government is being ravaged and, and perplexed. Why America, the, the number one hegemonic power on the earth, is getting its skirt lifted and exposed. And that's biblical talk. This is your payback. Coronavirus is your payback. Anyways. <clears throat> that's right. That's right. It's 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 coming back on them double. Absolutely. So, um I'm just doing this as a courtesy to obviously the Hebrew the Hebrews know what, what time it is. Hebrews know. But you Gentiles, you got to get a clue. Cuz I, I I see some of you say, oh, you know, when is this going to end? Oh, I just want it to end. And I'm just like shaking my head like we Hebrews, we shaking our heads like, "Wow, you don't even know the half. You don't even know the half." You expected this beast to last forever? You expected this unlawful system to, to last forever? Christians, don't you read your Bible? Oh, you, oh, you really think that the Israelites are done away with? You, you really think that the Christian church, who, may, who, who rose to prominence off of blood, has replaced the people of the, of the creator of heaven and earth? You really think that America was never going to get what was due to her? You really thought? What does it say in Revelations? Well, they, but they marveled. But they marveled at the beast. They marveled, saying, "Who can war with the beast? Who can war with the beast? Don't you know Elohim is described as a man of war?" What did you think? What did you what did you think? What did you think? <clears throat> yes, there is a judge. There is a judge who who maintains righteousness. Sure you had your time, but it is it's over now. It's 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 done. And this is the end. All of this all of this gripping tight and enforcing draconian laws and, and, and encroaching upon constitutional rights, you're, you're seeing your government, you're seeing a scared U.S. government. They have no clue. Donald Trump has no answers. Cuomo has no answers. De Blasio, no answers. Pence, no answers. Anthony Fauci, no answers. Deborah Burke, no answers. They have no answers. The European Union has no answers. You can't fight. You can't fight something you can't see. And this is a plague. This is a plague. It's a plague from Elohim. All you Christians, all you Christians didn't think Elohim would send a plague to, to kill how many people? How what is the death count? What is the what is the posted death count? 
right? We can get an idea of the posted death count, and then we, and, and it's probably exponentially much more because there are people who haven't haven't gone into the hospital and have been tested and confirmed to have to have coronavirus. There's people dying in their homes. People in Wuhan have died in their homes and never made it. So there is a a large number. You see that number on that website. You see the number that the news that the news is telling you is much bigger than that. It's much bigger than that. You're seeing a L, you're seeing your the creator of heaven and earth at work. Wake up, okay? Um, all right, y'all. So I just wanted to kind of um, give this um, little spill on, on on the government encroaching. Um, so that we can recognize the signs so we, that we can, you know, uh, the Messiah said, you know, the leaves fall, you know, the, 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 when, when the storm comes, you know, you see the clouds gather. Okay. This is, this is recognizing what's, what's, what's popping off right now. And I just wanted to sort of, uh, give everybody a little spiel, um, <clears throat> to sort of make them aware. Um, shalom, shalom to everybody. I hope you have a blessed, uh, rest of the uh, of the of the afternoon and evening, okay? Peace, light, and shalom.